Aircraft carriers are a central part of every developed navy. Carriers allow countries to deploy their air assets to places of strategic interest around the world. Today, the U.S. Navy owns 11 aircraft carriers, more than any other country can boast of. However, one U.S. carrier stands out clearly from the rest. Measuring roughly the size of 11 NBA basketball courts lengthwise and 5 courts in width, the USS Gerald Ford is an absolute sea giant. With its anti-aircraft and anti-missile systems, as well as the dozens of warplanes it carries, this carrier is one of the U.S. Navy's most vital assets today. But what is life like for the thousands of sailors, pilots, and other crew members who live below the Ford's deck? How are they prepared for service in this floating city? And what facilities are available on the carrier? This is life inside the world's largest aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald Ford. Named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford, who served in the Navy during World War II, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the lead ship of a new generation of aircraft carriers, designed to replace the Nimitz-class carriers that have served since the 1970s. As of 2024, the USS Gerald Ford holds the title of the world's largest aircraft carrier and the largest warship ever constructed. It displaces over 100,000 tons when fully loaded and houses a crew of over 4,500 sailors. Impressive as its size is, that isn't the Ford's only strength. The carrier incorporates numerous advancements, including the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System EMALS. EMALS uses electromagnetic force to launch aircraft, replacing the traditional steam catapults. This allows for smoother launches, better control over launch weight, and increased launch rate. The carrier is also equipped with AAG, Advanced Arresting Gear, which uses a more efficient system to slow down and arrest landing aircraft, improving safety and allowing for heavier aircraft landings. The Gerald Ford can carry up to 90 aircraft at a time, and these can range from F-35 jets to E-2D Advanced Hawkeyes, as well as drones and helicopters. Importantly, the carrier can sail for up to 25 years without needing to refuel, as it is nuclear power. Life Below Deck on the USS Gerald R. Ford With thousands of sailors and crew members living and working in it at every given time, the USS Gerald Ford is often likened to a floating city. But what's life like in this city? The crew works a 12-hour day, seven days a week schedule with rotating shifts. This can be adjusted depending on operational needs. There are regular drills and training exercises to ensure the ship is always prepared. Sailors have specific jobs and qualifications. They could be responsible for operating the reactor, maintaining aircraft, preparing meals, or working in intelligence. An army fights on its stomach, so goes the military adage. On the fort, a team of culinary specialists are assigned to the Herculean task of preparing four meals a day for the over 4,000 personnel on board. The Ford has two galleys or kitchens, a decrease from the five kitchens that the earlier Nimitz-class carriers contained. Fewer kitchens means more consistency in meal quality. Although senior officers and chief sailors eat in different dining areas or mess decks, they receive the same food as the rest of the rank and file. So what do the Ford sailors eat? On special occasions, such as Thanksgiving, sailors celebrate with social and sporting events and are treated to a feast with chicken, ham, prime rib, and other delicacies. On a normal day, sailors can expect various meal types, including vegetables, meats, pastas, and more. With a crew of over 4,500, communication is vital. Sailors use a variety of methods to stay connected, including internal communication systems, announcements, and briefings. Accommodations are modest but functional. Sailors are typically housed in berthing compartments, which are shared large rooms with bunk beds, although senior enlisted personnel and officers may have more private rooms. There are lounges for relaxation, game rooms, and libraries. The ship also has a chapel and barber shop. Several large mess halls serve meals throughout the day. The Ford has well-equipped gyms for sailors to stay fit. These gyms often have weight training equipment, cardio machines, and open areas for exercise classes. It also has a fully functional medical facility with doctors, nurses, and corpsmen on board. They can provide a range of medical care, from routine checkups to emergency treatment. The USS Gerald R. Ford, with its advanced technology and demanding operations, requires a highly skilled crew. 
Before deployment, new sailors are trained in military discipline, seamanship skills, as well as aircraft maintenance, weapon systems, nuclear operations, and other areas. They are also given platform-specific training, such as procedures for launching and recovering aircraft, firefighting, and responding to emergencies on a carrier deck. This involves practicing flight deck operations in a simulated environment on shore. Once assigned to the Ford, sailors receive ship-specific familiarization training. This familiarizes them with the layout of the massive carrier, emergency procedures unique to Ford systems, and their specific roles within the crew. Even after they commence duty on the carrier, sailors participate in regular drills and exercises to maintain proficiency in their emergency response skills and overall operational readiness. Operations and Responsibilities The USS Gerald R. Ford is a powerhouse aircraft carrier, and its mission and crew work together to project American naval power around the globe. Acting as a mobile airfield, its primary mission is to engage in air warfare at sea. It deploys its air wing of fighter jets, helicopters, and other aircraft to protect U.S. interests and allies. The Ford also plays a role in providing humanitarian aid and disaster relief when needed. The carrier's large crew is divided into several areas of specialization. These include the Air Department, which maintains and launches aircraft, manages air traffic control, and keeps pilots informed. The Deck Department, which handles the movement of aircraft on the deck, operates catapults and arresting gear, and ensures safe flight operation. So the flight deck is always a very dynamic and quite dangerous place, so you kind of have to be strategic. The Weapons Department, which maintains and prepares weapon systems, missiles, and bombs for deployment from the carrier. And the Engineering Department, which keeps the ship running smoothly by operating the nuclear reactors, propulsion systems, and electrical grids. There's also a Supply Department, which ensures the ship is stocked with food, fuel, spare parts, and other supplies. And lastly, the Ford has a medical department made up of doctors, nurses, and corpsmen who provide medical care for the crew. Daily operations on the Ford involve flight deck activities involving launches and recoveries of aircraft. This happens at a rapid pace, requiring precise coordination between pilots, deck crews, and air traffic controllers. Moreover, with a nuclear reactor, complex weapon systems, and countless moving parts aboard, the Ford requires constant maintenance to keep everything operational. The crew also practices fire drills, man overboard drills, and other emergency procedures regularly to ensure they are prepared for any situation. USS Gerald R. Ford, packed with next-gen tech. Our propulsion plant is, is all new, new electrical distribution system. The USS Gerald R. Ford is an ultra-modern carrier which boasts of several cutting-edge technology systems. These include the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, EMALS. As mentioned earlier, the EMALS is an upgrade on the traditional steam catapults and uses linear motors to launch aircraft with more control and efficiency, allowing for a wider range of aircraft to be launched, including heavier drones. The carrier also has advanced arresting gear, which complements EMALS by safely stopping aircraft on landing. AAG uses variable length arresting gear and improved energy absorbers to handle heavier aircraft with higher landing speeds. Dual-band radar is used for long-range detection and tracking capabilities for air and surface targets. Moreover, the carrier is equipped with an integrated warfare system, a centralized combat system that integrates various sensors and weapons into a single network, allowing for faster decision-making and improved coordination between different defensive systems. The USS Gerald Ford is powered by an A-1B reactor nuclear power plant, which generates nearly three times the electrical power of previous carriers. Compared to previous Nimitz-class carriers, the USS Gerald R. Ford boasts several innovative upgrades, including increased sortie rates due to its use of EMALS and an improved deck layout. Also, the A-1B reactor and other systems require less manpower to operate, reducing crew size and overall operating costs. Challenges Life aboard a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier like the USS Gerald R. Ford presents several challenges for sailors. They can spend months at sea away from family and friends. This can be stressful and lead to feelings of isolation and loneliness. Moreover, they often work long hours, especially during periods of flight operations or drills. This can lead to fatigue and burnout. Being at sea for a long period of time, it does get 
a little stressful sometimes. And while communication options have improved, consistent internet access can be unreliable at sea. Staying connected with loved ones can be challenging. The USS Ford's leadership tries to mitigate these problems through recreational activities, religious services, and providing sailors with opportunities for communication with home. But when it was go time, we're all relying on one another. And when it started getting a little sideways, they would look at me. And because I trusted them to do the job and they trusted me to lead them, we're unbeatable, undefeated, unstoppable. We had mission success over and over and over again. Have you or someone you know spent time on the USS Gerald R. Ford? Kindly let us know your experience in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. Until next time, this is Fleet Files signing off. See you in the next video.